chance to cover that Markham and Stouffville game last Sunday, and it's starting to look like the Spirit and the Waxers are the official contenders for that second place by in the north. Yeah, well right now Mike Stouffville have a five point lead over Markham and Aurora sits just four back of the Waxers, so it's definitely an exciting race that should go right down to the wire. Okay, well we've talked about what a great game it was in Stouffville last week, so let's get to that right now. One word might best describe this one, penalties. 57 minutes in total, plus a couple of game misconducts, so you know this is going to be interesting. Chris Perigini gets the start for the Waxers, other end is John Hall, and they would earn their keep on this afternoon. Right here, Perigini stops a quick shot from Brandon Gadette, almost gives up a trickling rebound, and pounces on the puck before Stoville can get to it. Here's Markham's first power play. They would have six before all was said and done. A scramble behind the net leads to an unsuccessful wraparound. But if at first you don't succeed, well, you know the rest and the Waxers first on the board. Stouffville quick to respond. Marco Breely steals a pass intended for Tyler Shaw. Dumps the disc into the Markham end. And here comes mistake number two. Ferragini's clearing attempt is scooped up by Christian Powers and the Spirit go to work. Powers can't stop at home, but he gets it to Anthony Ranieri, who passes to Breeley, and the man who started it all ties the score at ones. Just seconds later, and this, Christian Finch bats down a birdie, and his shot will take a lucky bounce right over top of Perigini, and Stouffville go up by one. The Spirit almost make it two, but Perigini is quick to smother this shot, and the boys in blue letting Stouffville know they'd like a little extra breathing room for their man between the pipes. Here's another chance for the Waxers. All over a sprawling John Hall, but Finch picks up an errant puck and leads a charge for the Spirit. Dumps it across ice to Andrew Doyle. Perigini comes up with a huge poke check. Time for a little four on four, and Stouffville with a couple of great chances. This time they're foiled by Chris Perigini. Mark him on the move, Banga. To Kendra, his backhand stopped by John Hall. Second period now, and the Waxers still looking for the equalizer. Tyler Shaw rockets a one-timer at Hall and makes a pretty good glove save. Back and forth we go, and Brandon Gadet with a red-hot wrist shot goes off the mask of Perigini. Now that's using your head. Stovall on the power play now. They would have 11 in all. And a little tic-tac-toe will find Doyle in front. He makes it a 3-1 game in favor of the Spirit. Stouffville threatened to make it a three-goal lead, but Josh Chapman's shot can't find its way through traffic, and the Waxers quick to clear. Here's another chance for the Spirit. Two on two, and Chris Perigini with a pretty good glove save of his own. Tables turn. Waxers two on two. And although Geiger will get the tripping call on this, Markham unable to capitalize on the power play. Third frame now, Waxer's power play. Banga's shot is turned away, but the rebound goes right to Phil Kiss. He fakes and passes to Daniel Patches, who threads the needle and brings Markham back within one. The Spirit would want that one back and try just about everything to get it. Vince Cerrone stopped, picks up his own rebound and feeds Chris Porter. Porter shot blocked by Ricky Bueller, and that's gotta hurt. Waxer's pressing, and Sammy Banga thinks he has a goal. Fortunately, the officials disagree, and it remains a 3-2 game. Here's a breakaway for Patrick Stiller. He's hauled down by Matthew Heffernan, who gets the gate, but the ensuing power play advantage would not yield results. Here's something you don't see every day. That's Perigini making a clearing attempt by the boards. Christian Powers goes head over heels over Perigini, who can't get back to the net to stop this. It's Chris's lucky day, though, because Stouffville were offside on the play, and the goal doesn't count. But this one does. Tyler Shaw, shot from the point, doesn't find the mark, but Calvin Higley is in there somewhere to stuff in the rebound, and the Waxers have tied the game at threes. Three minutes left to play in regulation, and Stouffville go back on the power play, and their number one line goes to work. Powers and Porter providing some screening in front, and it pays off as Matthew Heffernan's cannon from the point Beats Chris Perigini, and the Spirit prevail in a hard-fought battle that saw John Hall stop 41 of 44 shots. So, Mike, a wild one in Stouffville, and we might have even seen a bit of a playoff preview there. 
Well, we don't have long to wait, and you don't have long to wait to see the Junior Canadians in action against Vaughn. And as we go to break, we'll leave you with a few more scores from around the OJHL. Like every Canadian kid, hockey is ingrained in our DNA. Uh, my dad started me out when I was two years old skating on frozen ponds and you know from then I just I just loved it and it's just something about the you know the speed and playing on ice and every the whole thing just coming together. I really love hockey. Welcome back. We've had a chance to meet a few of the players and head coach from the Toronto Junior Canadians and they would see action against the Vaughn Vipers this week. We've got the highlights and that's where we're gonna go right now. Pearl chips it around for his, keep an eye on that, here's a turnover, Silkoff in front, hits the post! And there we go, one nothing for the Vaughn Vipers on an ugly turnover. In over the blue line now, a little drop pass, but it was on the backhand. For the Junior Canadians forward, around the boards it goes, only as far as the blue line. Takes a look, distributes down the wall, turn, tipped in front, it's right on the blue line, scores! Jim Froney! They're saying no goal. This one's being waved off. Uh, they're going to say it's a good goal. Explanation. Now they're calling it a goal. Is there didn't seem to be any sort of interference or any reason no. why not to call it a goal. So that's the referees coming together and getting it right. And you always love to see that. Terrence now. Backhands one through center. It hits a stick. And here we go. Backhand. Dallas Curro is there announcing and assisted by comes down the left wing side. Throws a backhand. You heard a snick of the post, my good friend. Solo pass for Porco. The blue liner is out of position here. Pia Santini telling Thacker where he wants him to be. Pardon me, that's Rumble, but Rumble shot. Eludes Phillips. Here's a chance now. And down the right wing side. Here we go. Almost a right wing shot. Scores! There was going to be a penalty on the play, I think. But a great job there by Ramsey. Boy, does he have some sweet hands and makes a good first pass as we were interrupted. Yeah, uh, Whittle just put one off a stick on the snapshot. The follow through hit the stick. I'm pretty sure it was Wojenski's uh, and just went up and over the shoulder there. So we have a 3 3 game, my friend, and uh, a silence is ushered into the building. Right. But there is time. Here's a shot. The battle in front is right on the line. It scores! The Junior Canadians. In a scramble play in front of Victor Adamo with 326. Nevertheless, there! Oh! Look at that! And it's Patrick Piacentini with an empty net goal. With an empty netter, a wrist shot that just found its way through everybody, and oh. including Eric Shimchik and little Pat Piacentini has the Vipers tied, and that has that bench fired up. Fullerton now to Fulton. Scores! Oh, there she is! Game winning goal! Fullerton, Fulton. Backhand pass in check. So we've talked about the battles in the north and in the south, but Georgetown and Oakville are fighting it out for first in the west, and there's still a lot of room to move in the east, so let's check out the standings.
Well, that will just about do it for another week. Do not forget to check us out online at RogersTV.com. With only a couple of weeks left in the regular season, we'll make a few playoff predictions next week, so be sure to join us for that. For our whole production crew, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. I'm Mike Jones. We'll see you next week.